Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. For today's tutorial, we're making a pointed hem tank top. For this make, we put a modern twist on something familiar, making a perfect addition to any modern fashionista's wardrobe. Speaking of, if you're looking for more modern makes, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet tutorials and patterns with more dropping weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 120 grams of yarn, and that's 260 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us when you're at a restaurant, do you go for the soup or the salad? I always love me a good salad. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using three stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, and half double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small and you can adjust it for your size and explain it in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and start off by making a chain that starts roughly 1 inch underneath our underarm down to where our waist is. Now I need roughly 6 inches or 15 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 25. And I also have my underarm portion already finished up, so I'm just going to be doing a small sample size with you. So now that we have our chain, we're going to do our first row, which is a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we are going to insert. When we have those two loops on our hook, we're all going to yarn over and gently pull through both loops. There's one, there's two, and that is our slip stitch. Let's do this again. Into that following chain, we're going to insert, yarn over, and gently pull through both loops. Now continue with one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tuck too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the falling row can be too tight to work into. So we've just made our way all the way down with our slip stitches, putting one slip stitch into every chain. Before we get started on the falling row, we are going to need to insert a stitch marker into the first stitch that we made, so that end that's the opposite of our tail end, because this will be the bottom. Now the stitch marker doesn't indicate numbers, it's just to remind you guys where the bottom of our piece is going to be. So now that that's into place, let's get started on our row 2, which is now a back loop slip stitch row. We're going to need to start the following row with an increase, and the way that we're going to do this increase is start with a chain 2. There's my first chain, that's going to count as a stitch for the following row. There's my second chain, that is going to count as our turning chain and flip our work. Now what we're going to do from here is slip stitch into that second chain's back loop. Now we're doing back loops to get some good stretch into it, and we're inserting it into the second chain from our hook, because that's where the additional stitch is going to come from for this row. So skip that first chain, and into that second, we're going to insert into that back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us. Then we're all going to yarn over and pull through everything on our hook, same way that we normally would, and let's do that again. Into that next stitch, insert into that back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything, and that's it. We're going to continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch to reach the end of the row. We have put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and we are finished with our row 2. So let's get started on our row 3. Now getting started for every single row for this underarm portion, it's going to start with an increase the same way that we did for the previous row. So again, we're going to chain 1, that counts as our stitch for the next row, and then chain a second chain, that's going to count as our turning chain and flip our work. And again, into that second chain from our hook, insert into that back loop, yarn over, and gently pull through everything, and that's it. 
We're going to continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our two previous rows. So we are going to have one additional stitch into every slip stitch row because of the increases that we're doing at the beginning until we have a portion that can stretch, remembering to stretch it as if we're wearing it when we're putting this up to ourselves. It does have a decent amount of stretch to it from mid underarm over to the front of our body. I would suggest for that to be around where our bra strap is or our tank top strap would be because that's where the strap for this piece is going to go. I will meet you back right after an odd number row or along the top, which is the tail end side, and then we can get started on the neckline. Alrighty, so we are back. Our underarm portion is all finished up. Now I have a total of 19 rows. My width is roughly three inches or eight centimeters unstretched. And now we're gonna get started on the first half of our neckline. So what we're going to do, we are not gonna do any more increases or decreases along the top, but we are going to continue to do the increases along the bottom. So since we should all be along the top, what we're going to do is chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch to reach the end of the row. And then I'll meet you back. All right, so our first neckline row is all finished up. Now, before we get started on the following row, we are all going to want to insert a stitch marker into the top of this first neckline row so that it makes it easier for us once we get started on the top band. But once when it's into the top of this first side row, along the bottom, we're going to increase the same way that we've been doing. So just as a refresher, we're all going to chain two and flip our work. After our chain two, we're going to slip stitch into that second chain from our hooks, back loop, and then yarn over, pull through everything. Then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Then for this portion of the neckline, we're going to repeat our two previous rows. So every even number row is going to be one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And every odd number row will have one additional stitch because of that increase that we do at the beginning of the row. Now from here, we're gonna to continue to repeat these two previous rows until we have a portion that can stretch over to mid chest. And I will meet you back right after an odd number row or along the top so we can get started on the middle row and then on the other side of our neckline. All right, so we are back. The first half of my neckline is all finished up. I have a total of 35 rows and my width is now roughly five inches or 13 centimeters unstretched. Now from here, we're all going to have a middle row and then we're going to basically mirror everything we did here on the other side. So to get started on our middle row, since we all should be along the top, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last one because we are going to need to increase at the end of this middle row. All right, so we are back and we are all at the end of our middle row. We should all have one stitch left. And at the end of this row, we're going to be doing an increase of two back loop single crochets. Yes, I said singles. We're doing single crochets because if we do an increase of two back loop slip stitches into that last stitch, then the second slip stitch can very easily be lost within the following rows, giving us the wrong amount of numbers. And the back loop singles basically look the same as the back loop slips anyways. So what we're going to do is into that last stitch, insert into that back loop with one single, and then into that same last back loop with a second single crochet and everyone's middle row is complete. Now let's get started on our following row. So let's all chain one and flip our work. So since we're along the bottom working our way up, we're going to start our following row, which is an odd number row with a decrease of two back loop slip stitches now. So inserting your hook into that first stitches back loop, pull through, and then into that next stitches back loop. When we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Then from here, continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Then just like the first side of our neckline, we're going to be doing a decrease into every other row. So our following row working our way down is just going to be one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. I'll meet you back when this row and our following row is finished up just so we can do a decrease together once more. All right, so we are back. Our first decrease row is all finished up for this side of our neckline. And our second row, which was a back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases is all finished. Now from here, we're going to do another decrease together just to make sure we all got it down. So since we're at the bottom, chain one and flip our work. Now to do our decrease together once more, find that first stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop, pull through, find that following stitches back loop and insert. When we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three of those loops and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and that is it. From here, we're just gonna continue to repeat these two previous rows until we have the same amount of rows as the first half of our neckline portion, making sure that we are not including our middle row. Once we do, I'll meet you back so we can finish up with our underarm. 
All right, so we are back. The second half of my neckline is all finished up and now we're all going to get started on our underarm portion. But first things first, we're going to want to insert our stitch marker into the top of our last neckline row to match this stitch marker that we have over here to make it easier for our top band. And what we're all going to do from here, since we should all be along the bottom, is chain one and flip our work. Then from here, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two, and I'll meet you back so we can do a decrease together. So now that we are two stitches away from the end of our row, we're going to do a decrease of two back loop slip stitches. So into that second to last stitch, we're gonna insert into that back loop, pull through, and then into that last stitch's back loop, insert, then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Now that's our decrease of two back loop slips, and since this is the underarm portion, we're gonna be decreasing on both ends. So we're just gonna decrease at the end of every row. So chain one, flip our work, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two so we can decrease together once more. We've just made our way back down with our second underarm row, left the last two stitches, and now we're gonna do another decrease of two back loop slips. So into that second to last back loop, pull through, last back loop, pull through all three. From here, continue to repeat our two previous rows, which is just a back loop slip stitch row with a decrease of two back loop slips at the end of every row for the same amount of rows as our underarm portion. And then I will meet you guys back. Alrighty, so we are back. The entirety of our front panel is all finished. Now I have a total of 71 rows and my width is now nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters unstretched. And now from here, we're just going to single crochet across the top of our piece. So since we should all be along the top, all we're going to do is chain one and then put one single crochet into every side row. So let's all start by finding our first side row. Everyone's first side row should be this divot right here. So find that top loop and insert with a single crochet. Into our falling side row, which should be this raised row, find that top loop and insert with another single crochet. Let's do this again. This is my falling side row, which is this divot right here. Find that top loop, insert with a single, this is my following side row. It's this raised row. Find that top loop and insert with a single. Continue this until we reach our stitch marker. So we're back. We've put one single crochet into every side row until we've reached our stitch marker. Now what we're going to do from here is chain one and insert your stitch marker into that chain space so we know where the top of our panel is going to be. And then from here, we're going to continue with one single crochet into every side row. Once we reach our following stitch marker, chain one, Insert your stitch marker into that chain space and then continue with one single crochet into every side row. When we don't have any more side rows left to work into, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so our single crochet row along the top of our piece is all finished and now we're going to get started on the top band. So I did do a chain up of one and cut and then I insert my hook into the top corner stitch where my stitch marker is. And we're all gonna start by making an odd number chain the height that we'd like for our top band to be. I'd like for mine to be roughly an inch or two centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain five. So go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and start by making your chain. Once we have our chain, we're all going to block off that last chain and do a chain two. Now that chain two does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and now we're going to put one half double crochet into every chain. So yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're all going to insert, yarn over, pull through. When we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Again, yarn over, into that following chain, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, and now continue with one half double crochet into every chain. So now that we've put one half double crochet into every chain, we're now going to connect it into the base. So what we're going to do is count out the next two available stitches, working our way across the top of our piece. So here's one, here's two. Into that second stitch, we're going to insert with a slip stitch to close off this row. Now that slip stitch does not count as a stitch, that's just to connect it. And then we do need to work our way up to the following row as well. So we're gonna be slip stitching up the following two stitches into the base as well. So into that following stitch, insert, pull through everything. There's our first slip stitch. And then one more into that next stitch. Now, none of those slip stitches count as a stitch and we're going to flip our work and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. So yarn over, finding that last half double crochet from our previous row, not working into any of those slip stitches. 
we're going to insert into that back loop, then pull through, pull through all three. Again, yarn over into that next stitches back loop, pull through, pull through all three, and continue with one half double crochet into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're all going to chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, and I'll meet you back at the base once more. So we are back, and we should all have one, two, three rows nearly finished. Now we're just going to connect our third row the same way that we connected our row one. So start by counting out the next two available stitches. Here's one, here's two. Into that second stitch, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. That slip stitch does not count as a stitch. And then just to work our way up to the following row together, slip stitch into the following two stitches into the base. There's one, there's two. Flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch again. From here, continue to repeat these two previous rows with no increases and no decreases until we work our way across the top of our piece to our other stitch marker stitch. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and then we're actually going to repeat everything we just did here once more. So I will meet you back when we have both of our panels all finished. Alrighty, so we are back. I have just finished up working our way across with back loop half double crochets and did a back panel as well. And also did a strap, but we're about to do that together. But what we're going to do from here, now that we have both the front and the back panel finished up, is seam up the sides. So we're going to start by placing our front panel on top of our back panel, and we're going to be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back. We are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now this is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. So start by finding that next available stitch and insert only in through that front loop. Find that next available stitch, insert only in through that back loop, then yarn over, pull through all three. Again, into that next stitch, insert in through that front loop, insert into that next stitch into the back panel and insert in through that back loop and pull through all three, and that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up seaming both of our sides, and now we're ready to get started on our strap. So first things first, let's make sure that our work is slipped right side out, meaning the seams that we just did are along the outside, and we're all going to insert our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. Then we're all going to make a chain the width that we'd like for our strap to be. I'd like for mine to be about an inch or two centimeters again, so I'm going to make another chain of five. Now the beginning of this strap is going to be done exactly the same way as our top band. So once we have our chain, we're all going to block off that last chain and do a chain two. Then into that third chain from our hook, insert with our first half double crochet, then continue with one half double crochet into every chain. Now that we've put one half double crochet into every chain, we're going to connect it into the base. So as a refresher, we're all going to start by counting out the next two available stitches. There's one, there's two. Into that second stitch, insert with a slip stitch to connect our row one. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into the following two stitches into the base. There's one, there's my second. None of these slip stitches count as a stitch. Flip our work and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Then just continue to do our back loop half double crochet rows with no increases and no decreases, working our way all the way up until we reach our last stitch from our top band. We should all be worked into that last stitch and then I'll meet you back so we can get started on the length of our strap. All right, so we are back. The underarm portion of our strap is all finished. Now from here, what we're going to do is continue on with our back loop half double crochet rows, but now not attached to anything that can reach up and over our shoulder and work into the top corner stitch of our other panel. So all we're gonna do at the end of this row is chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. We should have the same amount of stitches as chains made. At the end of the row, chain two, flip our work, and then one back loop half double crochet into every stitch again. From here, we're just gonna continue to do our back loop half double crochet row with no increases and no decreases until we have a total. That total will include this first row over here until we have a total of odd number of rows. Then I'll meet you back to show you how we're gonna connect it into the top corner stitch of our other panel. All right, so we are back. 
I now have a total of 31 rows for my strap. And just the length of my strap is roughly 8 inches or 20 centimeters. And now we're going to attach it to the corner stitch of our other panel. So let's flip our work over. So what we're all going to do from here is first of all make sure that our strap isn't twisted and then our hook should be in towards the corner of our other panel. Then all we're going to do is just slip stitch into that first stitch into the top corner. So we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through the slip stitch and then slip stitch into that following stitch as well as if we're working our way up to the following row. So into that following stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, none of those slip stitches count as a stitch. Then from here flip our work and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Then continue on with our back loop half double crochet rows with no increases and no decreases and connecting it into the base the same way that we did for the top band and for the underarm portion until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't I'll meet you back so we can seam it all together. We are back and we have just finished up the second underarm portion for our strap. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now let's seam everything together. And this is going to be a single crochet seam. So it's all make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out now. And all we're gonna do is find that first stitch into the front panel, insert your hook. Then into the back panel, find that first available stitch into there, insert your hook, and then single crochet around everything. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook. Next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook and single crochet. We are back. Both of our straps are all finished up and we are all done. Last we're going to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye!